Okay, so last video we solved Sudoku by using simulated kneeling. And I got some comments saying that I should have been using backtracking instead, so... Not to prove that I know backtracking, but because it is an extremely cool algorithm, I decided to go ahead and make a video on it. So backtracking can be used to solve this problem, and this problem, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And today we'll be focusing on two of these problems, the and queens problem, and the Knight's Tour. So in this video, I'll first go over the basics of what backtracking is, and then we're gonna go ahead and solve both these problems. And as usual, by the end of the video, you should be able to solve both these problems on your own, as well as others. Before going and implementing the solutions, let's first understand the logic that backtracking uses. And the logic is very similar to what we use as humans when it comes to solving a maze, and it is like this. Every time you come into a juncture where you have multiple options or multiple paths to follow, follow the first one and see if that leads to a solution. If it doesn't, come back and choose the next available path and see if it leads to a solution. So you just repeat this process over and over again every time you have to make a choice. This is why backtracking is a recursive algorithm. So that's it. That's the logic behind it. Quite simple. Now let's look at how this logic applies to the and queens problem. The requirements for the and queens problem are quite simple. You have an m by n chessboard and you have to place n queens in that board in such a way that none of the queens can capture each other. Now let's look at a 4x4 four four square just so we can understand this easily. So we're gonna solve the 4x4 four four and queens the same way that backtracking would solve it. We start with the first column and we place a queen. Then on the second column, we place a queen in the first available option. Then on the third column, there is no way we can place a queen. So we go back and then we delete the choice that we made on the second one. And we try the next available option. And then on the third one, there is only one square where we can place the queen. We cannot place the queen in any of those other squares. But there is no way we can place a fourth queen. So we go back to the first time that we made a choice. And here we place the queen on the second row and on the second column, as we see, we can place on the first, fourth row and on the third column, we can place the queen on the first row and the last column, we place the queen on the third row. As you saw, we went back and fixed the mistakes that we made every time we made a choice. So this is how we can solve a four by four and you can see how it can get very, very difficult to solve an eight by eight or 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. So let's do a quick coding montage and let's solve this. So now let's get in the part of the video that probably most of you came to see and this is how to actually implement the solution to the and queens problem. And the first thing that I did is that I created a board that's a 2D array, a NumPy array that's 8x8 eight eight full of zeros. And the reason why I did that is because I'm gonna place once in each square where I'm placing a queen. Quite simple. Then I created a validate function and this takes a board and an n, again, just for m by m board, I'm not gonna mention this n again, just so you know. And we check all the rows here, and if any of the rows have a sum that's bigger than one, then we return false. That means that a row has more than two queens. We do the same thing with the columns, then we generate all the diagonals, and we do the same thing with the diagonals. If any of the diagonals have a sum that is bigger than one, then we return false. Otherwise, we return true. Quite simple. Then this is the sole function, the main part of this whole solution. Here we're passing a board, a column, and an end. Just like in the example that we did by hand, we're gonna go column by column by column and try and place queens in different rows. The first thing that we do is that we validate the board. Is this board valid? And if the sum of this board is equal to n, so if we have placed n queens so far, or 8 in the case that we're doing now, then we return true. Otherwise, you continue 
for each row from 0 to n, those are all the different choices that you have for each column, you make that certain square where the row and column meet equal to 1 and you validate it. If you validate it, you continue with the rest. If this doesn't go through, which means that two queens are in the same row, column or diagonal, then you make this equal to zero and then you follow the next row possible. If this validate passes, then you try to solve it for the next column. And if you cannot solve it for the next column, then you set this equal to zero. If you solve it for the next column, which means that this was equal to eight, then the whole thing is done and this returns true. If it doesn't, it will call a function again and again and again until it returns the full path. So let's try running this. Let's see. And this is one of the solutions that the program came up with. And it's actually the same solution that I posted on the screen before. So very, very simple. Once you know the concept, you just go from column to column and you try all the rows until you find a solution. If a path does not lead to a solution or if a setup does not lead to a solution, you try the next one. Now let's see the Knight's Tour problem. So the Knight's Tour is actually quite simple as well. You have a chessboard, regular chessboard, and you have a knight and you have to make moves with the knight in such a way that the knight visits each square exactly once. Now, let's get into coding it. And the code for the night story is actually less. It's a little bit more difficult to understand though. First thing that I'd like to explain is what this move X and move Y is. So this is used to generate all the possible moves that the knight can make. And the knight moves in L shaped. And as you can see, we have here a two and a one. So let's say the knight was placed in the one, one position. The new position would be three, two, two, three, zero, three, and so on and so forth. But as you know, a knight can move a maximum of eight moves, but it can also move less if it is in the edge. And this is why we have this validate move function. This takes in a board, a row and a column, and it checks if the row is less than eight and bigger than zero, if the column is less than eight and bigger than zero, and it checks that that certain square has never been visited before. If all those conditions apply, then it will return true. So pretty simple. The setup, again, an eight by eight board full of zeros. And here I'm starting the board at three, two. So the knight is placed in location three, two, and I place a one in there. So now, unlike before where we were placing once in every place we visited, in order to keep track of the knight's tour, I'm actually increasing the counter by one every time we move. So after the first move, then we're gonna place a two, then a three, and so on and so forth. And here, uh, for the solve function, we pass a board, row, column, and as always, and the counter, which I just explained. And here we go through all the possible moves for X and Y, that's why we say for I in range of eight, we check if the counter is bigger or equal to 65, which means that the last knight was placed, the 64th knight was placed, then we return true. Otherwise, we generate a new X, which is gonna be equal to the row plus move X I. As we said, we go through the whole list to generate all possible moves. Same thing happens for the new Y. Then we say, if this move is valid, then the new position in the board is equal to the counter. And then if we can solve for the next possible move and so on and so forth, we then return true. Otherwise, that position in the board is again equal to zero. And if you cannot solve for any of the options, then return false. So that's it. That's the night tours code explained. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, hopefully you found this video educational. If you have any questions or any things that you don't understand, leave it down in the comments and I promise I will respond to every single one of them. But 
If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and if you want to see the other videos that we're going to post soon, feel free to just gently tap the subscribe button. Alright, peace.